Oslo, Norway, November 2010. Ministers, officials, and representatives from non-governmental organizations came to Oslo and participated in a high-level consultation to underline Europe's key role in the new global fight against non-communicable diseases. Human suffering, challenges, needs and solutions were discussed at the Oslo meeting. We need to empower all nations and all health systems in their fight against non-communicable diseases, including their treatment and their prevention. So we now have uh, out of 58 million deaths occurring in the world every year. We have 35 million deaths caused by non-communicable disease, heart disease, uh, stroke, uh, diabetes, cancers and chronic lung uh, diseases. And out of which, which actually represents 60% of all global deaths. And, and out of this, we have at least 9 million people who are actually dying because of non-communicable disease before the age of uh, uh, 60 years. Why is it important with the non-communicable diseases now? Non-communicable diseases are the overriding priorities, both globally and also in the European region, and therefore we have to tackle it as the number one priority, and this has to be in the forefront of our attention for the coming years, and this, uh, this meeting and this conference here is very significant. When I listened to Susanna Jakab, uh, the regional director this morning, uh, I uh, found it very important when she uh, pointed to the need of involving the whole society. The whole society needs to do an effort. And I think this is also the biggest challenge because the whole society means not only the health sector but other sectors, not only the governments but also civil society uh, and of course all other key stakeholders that have an impact on chronic diseases. The Oslo meeting focused much attention on discussing low-cost solutions in preventing the spread of non-communicable diseases. One Norwegian example is the Physiotech in Drammen, outside Oslo. What is important with this project? It's uh, to provide activity for uh, groups or persons that need help to um, uh, get in uh, physical activity um, more than they used to be. One of the target groups of the project are immigrant women, invited from the local area. Two, three, four, five, six, I think uh, the results, um, the participants, are to, uh, what they are telling, the good stories, are uh, very good results. Um, what they are telling about uh, their lives getting better, um, 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 less uh, medication, and uh, what physical activity uh, means in uh, both physical health and uh, mental health. How did it change you to come here? When I started here, I thought might it will be difficult for me. But afterwards it will easier and it helps me a lot. How important is prevention? Prevention is a key area um, and particularly the focus on uh, children and young people where so much of the uh, basis for uh, chronic diseases is led is extremely important and uh, it is a lot to gain both for the uh, individual who don't have to suffer chronic disease for that long but also for the society as such as there is enormous cost associated with the high prevalence of uh, chronic diseases. The main reason behind the Oslo meeting was to prepare Europe for the upcoming summit at the United Nations in New York in September 2011. This will be the first time ever that the UN General Assembly will arrange such a high-level meeting on non-communicable diseases. What importance do you think New York, September 2011 have? I think that this event is of a great importance because it is now more than ever time to put a very important issue on the agenda of United Nations. For our region, for European region, and especially for perspective of low and middle income countries, it is of great importance to put non-communicable diseases as a topic. What importance do you see on that meeting in New York? I think it's the most important meeting and that we, you, we must get our resources together to make certain that the same resources can be used to fight both uh, communicable and non-communicable uh, diseases. 
and in particular as poor nations are cl uh, as climbing up the ladder, uh, non-communicable diseases is becoming more and more important uh, reasons for death in Asia, Latin America and Africa. Many developing countries have to cope with the double burden of both infectious and non-communicable diseases that is overwhelming their healthcare systems. Action needs to be taken now to implement preventative interventions, including reductions in tobacco and alcohol use, overweight and obesity. These are images from Cape Town, South Africa, just one of the countries in the developing world now facing an increasing epidemic of non-communicable diseases as a result of changed lifestyles. Here, an activist from a local NGO in Cape Town is trying to help housewives to quit smoking. A lot of the discussions also centered around how to get people to quit smoking, which is one of the key drivers of chronic diseases. In all Norwegian stores, logos or brand names of tobacco products are not displayed to the customers. How would you describe smoking, the, the effects of smoking in society? Smoking is one of the most deadly addictions you can have. One of two smokers die of it, so we have to help people stop smoking. In connection with the Oslo meeting, a special seminar was arranged for Norwegian NGOs who play a crucial role in mobilizing people and making them aware of the fight against non-communicable diseases. What importance does the, the NGO have in this occasion? I think the NGOs uh, will be important partners for all uh, countries around the world because uh, we can do a lot to prevent the non-communicable diseases and I think uh, we, we can be a force and we can be a gardener and a watchdog as well on this work in the future. Are you optimistic? Yes, I'm optimistic. You have to be optimistic, even though the underlying trends are quite disturbing. Uh, we have the, it's going to be a very good year, a very, very intense year for non-communicable diseases. Uh, we have the regional consultations now. We're discussing this in the, the executive board of the World Health Organization. Uh, there will be the first global uh, ministerial meeting in, in Moscow. Uh, the World Health Organization will have this on the agenda and then finally the heads of state will discuss it in the UN uh, General Assembly. If we cannot get anything out of that, uh, I mean, that will be really terrible. So, so it has to be a good year to, to change the way we're dealing with this. <laughs>